Hi everyone, this is Bob with CellTechProductions.com. In the last video, I shared with you how to download the drum samples that I created on my Pearl drum kit. The download page was a popular visit on our website, so I'm happy you folks are enjoying the samples from this great sounding kit. I did get a great email question on how to trigger those samples with a MIDI keyboard. So I thought I'd do a quick video on how to map those samples in Logic Pro X using the ESX24 sampler. So let's get started. First of all, it's not about mapping uh, your samples to a specific keyboard. Any MIDI keyboard or controller will work if that's what you want to use. Now, you don't have to use a controller to use the sampler, as you can just use a virtual keyboard. Um, you could pull up the step editor, or you could pencil in the notes in the piano roll. It's really about using uh, a sampler that's in your software or a plug-in uh, in your DAW. Now, I'm in Logic Pro today, so I'm going to use the ESX24 sampler. So all I have pulled up here is a blank uh, instrument track, and I'm going to go down here in the instrument section, and I'm going to pull up one instance of the ESX24 sampler. So if I play my keyboard now, it's just the default um, patch that's in this ESX24 sampler. So to load my drum samples, I want to hit this edit button right here. And, and then it pulls up this window. And I can go to zone, load multiple samples. And this is my acoustic drum kit samples. So all I have to do is hit add all here. Pulls them down in this window. I hit done. And then it's going to open this window. And I'm just going to stay with the default here, contiguous zones. And the zone width is going to be one note. And it's going to start on C1 and go up from there. So let's see what happens here. So here's all my samples as I named them. And zone 1 to 24. I have 24 samples. And you can see it starts with C1 and then C sharp 1, D1, and so on and so forth. So I've mapped two octaves for this drum kit. Now I'm not going to use the pitch option. So I'm just going to select all of them. Now I'm going to uncheck the pitch here. Now all of these samples are going to play one shot. And what that means is if I go over here to B2 and I just press the key one time and it played the whole sample. If I uncheck this for that key, it only plays the sample as long as I'm holding the key. I'm holding the key down now. If I let go of the key, it stops playing. So I could do short bursts like. But I don't want that in my drum kit. So I'm going to leave all that turned on. So press one time and I get the whole sample. That usually works best for drums. Now I can close this window. And then it's asking me if I want to save this. If you don't save it, you're going to lose everything. I'll hit don't save. It came up with an instrument name, but. There's nothing in it. I'm hitting the keyboard. It's gone. But I saved it earlier. It's my Pearl um, drum kit. And now I have it back. I'm just going to build a basic kit with my MIDI keyboard. And we'll also look at the piano roll and entering some notes in manually. I'm done with this interface now. Now I can just go over here and we'll call this uh, kick. There's my kick. Okay, I'm in the record mode. So uh, let me just hit play here. And we'll record this kick. And as you can see from this piano roll, my timing's not that great. So I'm going to command A to select them all. And since I did um, play one sixteenth note right here, I'm going to change this to sixteenth notes and we'll quantize that. And let's see how that sounds. going to duplicate settings here, change the name of this to snare. Now I'll record a snare. So it's just on two and four. 
Um, same thing, I'll hit Command A, select all, and just hit quantize. So what I can do now, since these are MIDI nodes, I can go through here and first of all, I could loop it, right? So it continues to play. And I could also copy and paste these into other you know, parts of the song. So if I wanted a different drum pattern for the chorus or the bridge of my song, uh, so I have those options. And now I'm gonna show you, I'm just gonna go in and, and create another track here. We'll call this uh, Hi-Hat. And I'll just uh, pencil in the notes here. So I'm going to select my pencil tool and I'll select a region with a couple of measures here. Come down here with my um, pencil tool and let's just put a note in. So there's my closed hi-hat sound. I'm gonna pull up in my velocity window and I'll bring that up full velocity. And I'm gonna do this as eighth notes, right? So I'm gonna hold down um, the option key and that's one and two and. Okay, but the difference here Let's see, I want this to be like way down there. It's gonna be loud, uh, loud, soft, loud, soft kind of thing, so. And that's why we have the different colors here. So I'm just gonna copy that. So you can see I have in eight notes, one and two and three and. And then we, uh, well, I need four and, don't I? So that sounds like this. All right. And that's good enough. All I need is one measure of that, and I can do this. And there's my hi-hat sound. So a couple of good uh, reasons to work this way. It really makes it easy for editing. So for example, I heard a ghost note here on, right here on the uh of uh, beat four. And so I put a ghost note in there. And then the other thing is, uh, if you want to change the the tempo, I mean, you just move it up here to whatever, 127, check it out, plays perfectly. So I could continue on building lots of different uh, drum parts here, but you got the idea. I mainly wanted to show you how to take those samples, put them into the ESX24 sampler, and trigger them with your MIDI keyboard or just pencil them in. Uh, it's just another way of working with samples. So there you go, guys, a great way to trigger your samples using the ESX24 sampler in Logic Pro. If you haven't done so already, go over to celltechproductions.com and download the drum samples. Hope you enjoyed the video. If so, give me a thumbs up. Please comment and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.